Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about microbes in sewage treatment. Now even before we talk about sewage treatment, first we need to understand what is sewage. So sewage is nothing but waste water that needs to be removed from a community for healthy living. Now when we say waste water, what exactly do we mean? So it means that water which gets contaminated with different types of solid and liquid wastes that, uh, that forms sewage. Now what is it composed of? What does it contain? What is waste which is present in the water? This waste can include human excreta, this can include organic matter, this can include microbes that is not only not the useful ones, the pathogens, it can include some good microbes as well which are heterotrophic in nature that is they are dependent on other living organisms so that means they can kill some of the pathogens. So if you talk about the composition of sewage, it is made up, it, it contains human excreta, human or any other animal excreta. It can contain organic matter. It can also contain pathogens, that is the disease causing microbes. It can also contain some good microbes. So these are the various things which might be present in the sewage and due to the presence of human excreta or organic matter or pathogens this turns out to be extremely harmful because whenever pathogens are present it is capable of causing any sort of disease in a, in a person or in an animal for that matter. So now why do we need, why are we talking about sewage treatment, why do we want to treat the sewage, what do we want to do? Sewage is something which contains waste, which contains harmful substances. So what do we want to do? We want to remove it from the community. So we want to dispose the sewage. Now the question is, now when we know that we have to throw the sewage, we can just throw it anywhere. So is it like that? Or we need to make sure that there is a proper disposal of the sewage. So let us see, what are the harmful effects or how can the sewage be harmful to us? Now disposal of sewage is very very important because we know this that it is not going to help us. So our purpose is to dispose it off somewhere. But how do we dispose it? Because since it is extremely harmful, if we directly throw it into a river, what will happen? The entire river water will become dirty. The entire river water will get polluted. So how does that affect us? So let us see that why proper disposal of sewage is needed. Now inappropriate sewage disposal can cause pollution and this pollution can harm us in a number of ways. Now let us look at some of the uh, disadvantages of the sewage on us, some of the harmful effects. Now this water which might get polluted, this water might be used by us for cleaning our body, for cleaning ourselves. So we are basically using a dirty water to clean ourselves. The same water could be used for cooking or for preparing various drinks. It can be directly used for drinking. It can be used for washing clothes. So there are so many different ways by wherein we use the water. Now if the water itself is dirty and polluted, so we are basically uh, getting all the all the bad things inside our body. If you are eating food which contains contaminated water, you are very likely to suffer from any waterborne disease. So if you are taking bath in a water which is polluted, you are very likely to get some skin diseases. So in a similar way, if you see that water is used by us for a lot of purpose and if the water itself is polluted and contaminated, so that, that is going to make you ill, that is for sure. So if the water is directly disposed to any water body, whether it is a river or sea or pond, so it causes water pollution and water pollution in turn causes diseases because the same water will be used for bathing, drinking, cooking, washing and not only us, it is not only the human beings who are affected, also the aquatic life gets threatened like the life or the fishes or the other aquatic animals which live inside the water, they also consume that contaminated water and they also get killed. So the entire aquatic life will also get threatened. So because of all these disadvantages, we just cannot directly dispose the sewage in any, any water body. So what is the solution to this? 
sewage treatment. So we need to treat the sewage in such a way that its polluting effects get reduced. I mean, we cannot uh, reduce the polluting pollution effects completely, but at least we can make sure that it has reduced to a very, very large extent so that it doesn't cause any direct harm to us. So they, this is where we talk about sewage treatment. So the sewage needs to be treated in sewage treatment plants before disposal. Now what exactly happens in the sewage treatment plant? Now as I said just now that the purpose of sewage treatment plant is to just to ensure that the content of the sewage should be treated in such a way that its harmful effects get reduced to a large extent. So now this entire process of sewage treatment takes place in two major stages that is primary treatment and secondary treatment so in any sewage pl treatment plant these two stages are carried out primary treatment and secondary treatment and here we will see that microbes play a very important role in this sewage treatment process now once the sewage is treated so it becomes less harmful and then it can be directly disposed into the water bodies because in that case it is not going to cause any major water pollution so that is how the entire process works now the question is how exactly is the sewage treatment done what happens in the primary treatment what happens in the secondary treatment so you might be curious to know that so let us discuss it one by one so first we will start with the primary treatment of sewage so let us see what happens in the primary treatment of sewage. Well, the primary treatment being the first step, it is a physical process where physically the particles, solid particles are removed from the sewage. So physical removal of particles from sewage using the following processes. Now, how do you physically remove the particles? Because the, the sewage is, first of all, it is so dirty and that too, it, it is going to be in large amount. So it is not possible to pick and select each solid particle and remove it. So that is not possible. So we need to follow some smart process so that all the solid particles can be removed at one go. And that is why the processes which are used for this purpose, one of them is filtration. So what happens here? The solid is separated from the liquid by passing it through pores of a filter. So what comes to your mind when you think of a filter? It is nothing but a, a piece of a filter paper, a piece of paper with tiny pores into it so that the liquid can pass through the pores but the solid will remain as a residue. So when you think, so filter paper was just an example. Now. You can take another example of filter when you think about the sieve which is often used at your home to uh, prepare tea or coffee. So that is how you filter the solid part from the liquid part. So that is how filtration takes place. So that is one process. The next process is sedimentation. So what happens in sedimentation? Here particles are separated from water under the influence of gravity so if you see let us suppose if this is the solution which has the liquid as well as some solid particles now if you leave it without disturbing for quite some time then under the influence of gravity what happens is the heavier particles tend to settle down at the bottom so here you can see these are the heavier particles so the solid particles will get settled down at the bottom and the water will remain on the upper side now if you want to separate them what you do just take out the water from this beaker so what will happen the solid particles will remain at the bottom and you will get water which is now free of most of the solid particles so this is another process which is involved in the primary treatment so filtration and sedimentation these two processes together help to remove the solid particles from the soup now let us look at filtration and sedimentation in little more detail. Now as I said filtration the first example that should come to your mind is the sieve which you use at your home. So it, it becomes very easy to separate some solid from some liquid because the liquid will pass through the pores but the solid will not be able to pass through it. So this is how the process of filtration takes place in on a laboratory scale. So this is the filter which is being used which has a lot of pores so the liquid will come flow through it but the solid will get trapped there. Sedimentation is another uh, process here the particles are separated from water under the influence of gravity so here you can see this is the entire solution now if you allow the water to stand as it is 
then the particles and the microbes will start to settle down. So they will all reach towards the over a period of time t, let us suppose this, uh, this solution is allowed to stand without being disturbed for some time t. So after time t you will see that all the solid particles have got have been settled down. Now the longer the water is stored, the more will be the settlement. So the longer is the time for which you leave the water without disturbing. So the more will be the uh, amount of settlement at the bottom. So here you can see that these particles are suspended in water but here the particles are all settled at the bottom of the water. Now when this happens what happens the entire sewage gets divided into two parts now by the end of the primary treatment what happens is the sewage gets divided into two parts that is the primary sludge which is the unwanted part for example this part so this is the unwanted part we do not want this because it contains all the undesired solid particles so this is known as the primary sludge and what is this part? This part is the supernatant which is also known as effluent. Effluent is nothing but the supernatant liquid. So this supernatant liquid is the desirable part. So at the end of the entire primary treatment, what is the good thing that we get? We started with the sewage which contained a lot of um, lot of undesirable particles. Now at the end of primary treatment what we receive is the effluent. So this effluent is relatively dirt free, relatively clearer. So now this effluent will undergo the entire secondary treatment process. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.